Are you tired of the badass boy protecting the damsel in distress? Then why not switch sides and make sure the badass girl saves the prince in distress? I don't know. You guys check the dictionary. I'll just speak about 10 anime where the badass girl falls in love with the shy boy. Here we go. Number 10, Madaka Box. Madaka is that perfect girl. She's good at sports, she knows how to lead a team, and she knows how to curtains in her academy. Yeah, from the looks of it, you can see that this is that anime with a badass girl, which seemed to be a trend back in the day with anime like Mungan and Sinakera. And Madaka Box simply takes inspiration from these anime to build up its main character. This is a shonen anime, so the romance is going to exist only as a subplot. But when you don't need cute, cuddly romance, you can see how Madaka starts to kick ass. <laughs> That's enough for me. Number 9, Majakoi. Oh, Samurai Girls. At this point, you should know Japan is going to milk samurai girls faster than a dairy factory milks their cows. And just like they turned King Arthur into a waifu, what is the best way to get the attention of the audience? Meet the samurai waifus who can kick the ass of anyone that comes along the way. Yes, this goes along the harem route, but give this a chance because since all the girls here are badass, the anime definitely does some justice to the badass girl innocent boy niche. Since this was based on a visual novel, the fans of the original visual novel received the anime with mixed reception, saying they converted one of the best slice of life visual novels of the medium to a generic harem show. Well, I liked it, but why don't you watch this and make your own opinion? Number 8, Ergo Proxy. <laughs> Watching Ergo Proxy is like entering a maze and not knowing where to exit. This one starts with a lot of innovative concepts, which is why I feel like many fans abandoned it after the first episode. But the ones who stayed know how much of a complex story this anime brings to the table. Yes, it starts off as the regular human verse evil robot story, but then along the way, it incorporates a lot of elements that make the story more engaging. Our main character is one hell of a badass, but the boy she meets is a guy who cannot shoot a gun even if the enemy stood right in front of him without moving. Just like Madaka Box, the anime doesn't focus too much on romance since it's a mystery anime, but when it does focus on it, it's pretty great. Number 7, Eld Live. Now, this guy's not too innocent or shy as others, but he definitely gets an ass-kicking sidekick to accompany him. Eld Live is more like a toned-down version of Psychopaths, but it happens in space. Oh, and the roles are switched too. This time our boy is the oblivious one, the girl is the more badass one. And don't go expecting complex plots and characters in this one, because overall this is just a simple shonen anime that does the job right. There are cool fight scenes, there's a main character who gets his development as the anime progresses, and there's definitely good chemistry between the main duo. That's enough for me. And this ended with a hint that there will be a second season. But we all know the myth of second seasons, don't we? Number 6, Witchcraft Works. Do you need Harry Potter, where Hermione carries Harry in a broomstick? Okay, that was a very bad joke, but Witchcraft Works is an anime that is very similar to that because this guy who got beaten and insulted all his life finally gets the world's strongest female bodyguard. And guess what? She's a witch. Oh, uh, not a normal witch. A badass witch. What I really liked about this show was the animation. I mean, this is a pretty simple anime. Girl meets boy, girl turns out to be a badass, boy is more naive than a newborn infant and girl keeps protecting the boy. For an anime like this, this has way better animation than other romance anime. And each battle scene was focused on developing the relationship of the main characters. So yeah, I'll eat this up faster than chocolate cake. Number 5, Black Lagoon.
Yes, yes, I know what you're going to say. How can Revy, a woman who carries the entire Urban Dictionary on her shoulders and has a human kill count that matches Levi Ackerman's Titan kill count, ever develop a romance towards an average office worker? But what you need to know is that Revy loves rock in her own sadistic, nihilistic way. Come on, the girl grew up in the worst place in the world, so don't expect her to turn into a high school girl who suddenly wants to flirt with Rock. The Roberta's blood trail arc is what specifically showed how much of an influence Rock has over Revy, and since the anime doesn't seem to sprout out a new season anytime soon, it's best to go for the manga to see how the relationship has developed. Number 4, Spice in the Wolf. <laughs> Do you love wolf girls? Do you love when urban legends fall in love with merchants? Okay, if that was too much, then let me just go and say this is a story about a wolf girl falling in love with a merchant who pretty much has a voice similar to Le Louch. The wolf girl is voiced by the same voice actor who voiced Callan. Apart from that similarity, this couple definitely has good chemistry. Halo isn't that type of girl to wield two swords and cut and chop enemies like Raftalia, but she definitely knows how to turn into a big wolf who can scare away anyone that comes close to our friendly merchant. This anime also explores a lot of fantasy themes, so if you need a good fantasy romance anime, this will definitely fit right into your watch list. Number 3, Shakuga no Shana. <laughs> Do you know how to make the perfect badass monster killer? Give the girl red hair and a sword. Seriously, Shana definitely has a higher kill count when it comes to the Denzins. Shakuga no Shana is one of those shows that combine the supernatural and romance genres really, really well. And it also has a badass female lead who definitely falls to the overpowered category. The characters of the show also get their own moments to shine because of the pacing, and each character's backstories are revealed through time, which makes us see how their backstories affect their actions. If you need some spiritual badassery with red-headed maidens and swords, then here's the show for you. Number 2, Dead Man Wonderland. <laughs> When I first saw the girl, I thought, huh, she definitely looks like a female version of Psycho Kanaki. And by the end of the episode, I was proven right when she tried to kill our main guy with a smile on her face. When young Ganata Igarashi and his classmates decided to go on a trip, all his classmates are killed, and Ganata is held responsible. Now he is thrown into a prison where he needs to perform various death games to survive. Prisons are bad, but the prisons in Dead Man Wonderland are something even the worst prisoners wouldn't dream of. And combine those bad experiences with a psycho girl and our boy Ganata feels like he was thrown into a hell on earth. Overall, the show may feel like a gritty, gory adventure, but on the other hand, it feels like a mini version of Squid Game, since it knows how to keep you hooked through the whole series. Number 1, Darling in the Franks. Let me get a taste of you. After all, you are now my darling. All right, let me say the magical word in three, two, one. Daddy, oh hi up. Hi, daddy. Um, daddy. So that's the book no daddy no koto. Kimi, daddy no nan na no. Datte, book no daddy no nan da kara sa. Daddy. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the anime where the pink-haired girl kisses the oblivious boy and teaches him how to ride the robot. I'm sure no introductions are needed for Zero Two because she literally manages to surpass the rankings of Best Girl Rem and land on the top spot in a lot of top waifus lists. Darling in the Franks also has an interesting sci-fi plot, which pretty much feels like a ripped-off page of Neon Genesis Evangelon, but with a lot of characters instead of one. Even though some people call the ending a masterpiece and other call it the biggest car crash of the 21st century, we can all agree what matters is the journey and not the destination. Trust me, I wish this was true for a lot of shows that are about to come in the future.